So we're back here on the Duncan Duo Show talking about the local real estate market. You know, the, the, we were talking just before the break about the proposed 75-story towers uh, that, that's talked about in the um, Port of Tampa. They call it the Port Tampa Bay's vision of the Channel District. is notable for its literally lofty ambition. And I have to agree, I was quoted in the article, she called me to interview me about it, and, you know, it's, it's, it's great what's going down going on downtown Tampa and Channel Side. I'm excited for it. I think it's going to make downtown great. I think there's a lot of people involved, and, and obviously Mr. Bennett with his vision and everything he's doing with the Lightning and them winning and all the great things that are going to happen. I think in 10 years it's going to be not even recognizable compared to what it is today, similar to the transformation St. Pete went through. However, I got some concerns that, uh, there's more and more people throwing their, you know, card into the into the downtown development scene, um, and, and too much of it could be a bad thing. You could oversaturate, you could overbuild it, and that's one of the fears that I have with a with a you know a, a property like this, uh, with such a, a you know a focus on a skyscraper vision. Is well, number one, how are they going to finance them? Who are they going to sell them to? Because the last few channel side condo projects without a lot of channel side infrastructure, nightlife, restaurants, really didn't do great. They flopped, you know. So um, I know that Mr. Bennick's vision is to create an amazing downtown environment, and I know that's coming. My fear is there's too many people that are uh, starting to get into that mix that are they going to oversaturate it. Not him, but all the other people jumping on after he has decided to, to create this amazing downtown environment. And it does make me a little concerned when I hear about a 75-story you know, tower and, and their focus is on luxury and high-end and million-dollar condos. I mean, if, if somebody has that kind of money to buy a second or a third home and a million-dollar condo, they're probably going to want to be on the beach. I mean, that's right. I mean, I, I just good point. Especially with there's no, it's not there yet. You know, and, yeah. and I'm really concerned. The more developers that we talk about piling into that area, what's going to happen with the infrastructure? What's happened with the commercial development? Are there going to be enough restaurants? Is there enough to support it? I get that it's kind of the sexy thing right now, and and I think that. There's, there's certainly a place for a lot of the inventory because I think millennials can buy it. I think there's some creative things they can do. I'm just really nervous about them overbuilding it. Remember and the Trump Towers. That, that's it. That went nowhere. Right? Yeah. And, and so so I'm, I'm concerned that they're going to over overdevelop it. They're going to build too much down there. And then all these great ideas that we have get Trump because I mean, it wasn't too long ago the Lightning were, agreed. It wasn't too long ago the Lightning were in the playoffs and everybody wanted to go down the channel side and party. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't fit people in there. They had to throw them off the uh, curve right. section, if you remember. So, right. Because there wasn't so what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because obviously they're going to keep winning. Yeah. And I know Mr. Vin. I, I know his plan is is to address a lot. There's no doubt in my mind. It's to address all the infrastructure problems that would be created by what he's going to do. What that what what I think there's concern about on my end is what infrastructure problems will get caused by all the fringe developments going on around it outside of him. And I think long term, everyone's excited because I think there's so much great, I mean, there's, it's amazing what can happen, you know, with, with everything that's going on. But my fear is people jumping on the bandwagon and, and oversaturating the market. Yeah, everybody over there uh, loves Vinick, and, and so they're trying to, they're piggybacking on his coattails. Because you know, he's, he's yeah. a pretty smart guy, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, he's built <laughs> right. some amazing stuff. So if he's doing it, hey, if he's doing it, then hey, let's do it because it's probably a smart Pro move. Yeah. But there's going to be, it's, it's you know, there's going to be too, I'm concerned that there's going to be too much of it. You know, and it's all the people that are doing this are all smart people, and they've all done their research, they've all done their studies, but but they're, they're making decisions today about nine years down the line, and there is a lot that can change in that in that time. But there's so much that can change during that time frame. So, you know, it, again, it was, it, I'm, I'm not just ganging up on the Port Tampa Bay's vision or that project because it's every week I see a, a, there's a new one. There's an apartment being built. There's another developer. There's somebody doing this, and... And and I think that it's great. I'm just concerned that um, for those know, of us, for those of us who in real estate in Florida, especially in this area for you know last ten plus years, we, we went through kind of a right. boom, and uh, we saw what happened. I, I would just love a nice four percent growth. Yeah, exactly. Every year we have some nice good. gradual yeah. uh, takeoff. Just, just keep going for the next yeah. twenty years. That would be a wonderful thing. It, not, it does. Not overdo it, it. it. It makes me nervous. It does. It makes me nervous. And I told her that, and and, and I'm obviously not the only one. 
But and, and the other side of it is if they go uber luxury with it, you know, two and three million dollar condos, I mean, there, there's plenty of them on prestigious Bayshore Boulevard that aren't selling right now. You know, I mean, I, you know, uber, I lu uber luxury, uber luxury. Yeah, that, those aren't people that drive cars. <laughs> okay. okay, those aren't like car drivers that buy luxury condos. Those are super luxury. But if you if you look at that market, there's plenty of them not selling now on Bayshore. You know, there's the, that market is, is tough. I mean, we are not New York City. We, right. we, it's not that we don't have wealth here and we don't have out-of-towners or Europeans, but that'll have to be a heavy, heavy marketing push to, to people outside of this area if they're going to sell that type of, those type of properties yeah. down there. I, yeah, I, you know, I've been doing this a long time. Probably can count on one or two hands how many $2 million, $3 million buyers there are out there. You know? Yeah, there's not. There's not <laughs> and if they and if they're going to buy a single family, the condo just is... It's not as common here. It's just we're not New York City. So we're going to be back after the break. We're going to have our tip of the week uh, from Hillsborough Title and Florida Agency Network and Tampa Bay Title at all. He's got whole kinds of title company names after his name. Aaron Davis will be here with our tip of the week after a quick news break here on the Duncan Duo Show.